Hello, my friends. I'm from Altan Studios, and welcome to today's video. Today, we'll be using the cloth tools inside of Blender to model this couch. This is the final result, and hopefully, by the end of the video, you might have something looking similar to this. All right, I'll show you the way that works the best for me, and hopefully, this works for you as well. I'll be using Substance Painter for the texturing, but you can use textures in Blender if you don't have access. And also, this is part two of a three-part series, so if you haven't watched part one, you can do so now. And also hit the subscribe icon and leave a like to support the channel. All right, let's start. Again, when it comes to modeling, you should get some reference images. These are my references. However, I don't like the pattern on this one so much, so I'll be using a pattern similar to the one on the bottom right. Just keep in mind that the same rules will apply for different patterns, and I'll be showcasing that in the third video. So hit the notification bell and get notified as soon as that video comes out. And with that said, let's start. All right. So once you open Blender, you can just delete again all these startup items. Um, we're only going to be using the cube, so we can already add a cube. And then let me just import the reference images as well. All right. So you can follow along. All right. So let's get this dimensions right. Okay. So we've got 13 centimeters here. So that would be this one, 0 0.13. And then it's 92 wide, so 0 0.92. And then the height we have, let's see, so it will be this amount, uh, just minus this amount, so it is 51 ish. Yeah, let's see, 51. All right, and then once we have this part, I'm just going to duplicate this for the base. And that should be around, let's see, uh, 47, so it's 31. So I'm just going to make this about 18. So let's just change this up. 0 0.18. Let's see if that's correct. All right, that should be fine. And then the width of this is 180. All right, so then we can just place this. Um, so I'm just going to turn on the snap to edge and just turn that on. And we can just snap easily into place. There we go, perfectly aligned. And now let's see the back part. I'm just going to duplicate this again. And just move it back up towards this. And I'm just going to grab the face from the bottom and just snap that to the base here. Yeah. And then we can take this part just then off the snap. And we can just bring this into place. I'm going to pull out the front part just a bit, just this front edge here. Yeah. Just for the back cushions to have something to lay against. All right, so that is done. This part we will just duplicate. And then for the seats, we can just duplicate this bottom part again. And we just need half of the length because we've got two pieces. And just with the snap tool again, just like that into place. All right, the back part we can just bring out a bit. So I'm just going to go into face edit and just move this forward a bit. And then for the height, we're going to have, and then for the height, maybe just around, somewhere around, yeah. Okay, then we can just go back to object, and duplicate, duplicate this one, just to have something as a reference for later on, we can just hide it for now. And for the back side, we're just going to duplicate this again. And as you can see, we don't have the parameters, so we're just eyeballing this. Right about there should be fine. Alright, so now we have most of the pieces we're going to be working with. I'm just going to duplicate this as well. 
just to have something to work on should we mess up this part so it's always best to just duplicate your pieces all right so we won't need the reference anymore so i'm just going to delete the reference for now and i think let's just name these pieces as well all right so it's named just in proportion so we know what we're working with if we need to find something from there so now we just want to model the basic look of this couch as you can see uh, like i mentioned previously i'm not too fond about this blocky pattern i'm more interested in the diamond pattern that just looks a bit better than having this this looks a bit flat and we want to showcase the full effect of this um, cloth simulator so let's first start with the armrest and the base and then the backrest we can get those ones done and then we can move on to the cushions and complete them okay so firstly we're going to start off with the armrest and we can just go into edge select mode and we're just going to add two loop cuts right in the middle and then we're just going to scale them more or less into place this will just be to to add some stability as we're going to be using the subdivision surface modifier so this will just keep everything in place and we're just going to do the same for the side and then just scale that in place all right perfect so we're just going to add some loop cuts in the let's see we're just going to add some, uh, one loop cut here and we're going to add some in the middle just about like there and right about there all right so we got some good geometry to start with now we're just gonna i'm gonna add another one right right down the center there and another one running on the top and another one for this part there now we just select all the edges that we're going to work with so i'm just selecting the ones just in the middle of these lines that we added um, previously so i'm just selecting the ones that runs through here okay now we have the edges selected this is the ones we're going to be using i'll just bring the rest of the mesh back and i'm just going to add a bevel to this uh, just like that i'm going to go over to face select mode and just insert these as well just like that now we can go over to object again and go into the subdivision modifier so we just add three segments to this and then we can just apply this all right so now you can see those are selected Right, so next we can go over to the sculpt mode and make sure you are on inflate for the filter type and that use face sets is activated. If you don't have this menu there, you can just press N and yeah, under tools, you'll find the same menu there as well. So I'll just close that up again. All right, so we're going to go to face sets and select this one, this face sets from edit mode selection. And there you can see our face sets are selected. If you hover over the highlighted part and select Control and W, you'll see it will increase. And if you select Control Alt W, it will decrease. So we just want the smallest amount that we possibly can, which is this one. And next, we're going to go to the cloth filter tool. There we have it selected. And now we're just going to hover over the green part, click and drag to the left just a bit at a time mm -hmm. and then we can just select the other part and drag right we can just go over to object mode again and shade smooth so now basically we have like a thick padded effect going on here now we can select the base and with the base this is going to be quite simple we're just going to go into edge and let's just select all of the edges and we're going to just do a bevel on this one just make sure that you select your scale just apply the scale to this 
edge select again and we can bevel just add a few segments All right, that should be good enough. And we're just going to add a loop cut right down the middle, select it, and we're going to bevel this one as well. Just with one segment, we can go into face select. And I'm just going to insert this. All right, so we can go back to object mode again, add modifier, subdivision surface, add three segments to this, and apply. And then we can go over to Sculpt Mode, Face Sets from Selection, there we can see it. And just go, make sure you're in your cloth filter. Just going to minimize this quite a bit. And then just drag a bit to the left and a bit more. And this one we can just puff out a bit. Just like that. Go back to object mode and you can see this is what we are left with shade smooth. So we got this nice line running through the middle there. And we can do the same here for the back rest. And that is complete. All right, so next we're gonna do the cushion part for the seat. So let's just get that on its own, make sure we apply the scale. How is that? There we go. Apply the scale, go into edge select. We can select all the edges and just run a bevel, one segment, just about there. And then let's add some loop cuts. About there should be good and on this side as well. There we go. All right, with this selected, we can go over to face select. Let's select all these faces inside. There we go, then we just go over to face and we're gonna poke the faces, go back to face and try to quads. And I think this is gonna be enough for us to work with. So then we can just go over to vertex select and we're just going to select all the vertices that we're going to be using. And also we're going to go there, on this side. There we go, that should be good. And then we just do the same for this side as well. Alright, so once you have all your vertices selected, the ones we're going to be using, you can just see Shift, Control, and B. And just about, they should be good. Go over to Face Select, I'm just going to insert these as well. Right about there. That should be fine. Go back to Object, and we're going to apply three segments to our subdivision. And we can apply that. Just go to Shade Smooth. Alright, so now over again to Sculpt Mode. And we're just going to get those face sets from the selection. Uh, then of course you can increase or decrease the size. I think about... Yeah, I think there should be fine. And also just go over to your side view, select the box mask. And then we're just going to mask this bottom part. And of course we can... Just hit A and then just smooth that out as well. That should be good. Go back to your cloth filter. And then we're just going to drag on the highlighted part. Just bit for bit. We're just dragging to the left. Until we think we got something that we can work with. And then on the other side we can just drag to the right end.
And there we go. I think I'm happy with this result. Yeah, this result should be good for now. And then we can just go over to object mode again. And there you have it. Another thing that we're going to be doing is just adding like a C mark right through here. We're also going to use the cloth filter for that. So go back to edge select. And we're just going to select these edges. Okay, with the edges selected, we're just going to bevel this once, just one segment. Go to face select, and I'm just going to inset this as well. Just a small bit. And so after you inserted the faces, I'm just going to select um, control. I'm just going to hit control S just to scale this in just a tiny bit. Just like so. All right, and then we can go back to object mode. I am going to add another subdivision surface, but only with one segment. And hit apply on that. Then go back to sculpt mode. And select the face sets from the new selection. And we can drag that in just a bit more. And then on the part that's not highlighted we can just drag that in as well. Like so, and then if you go back to object mode, you can see we've got something that's more or less like a seam. Now we can just bring the rest back, and there we have it. I'm not going to duplicate this right now, I'm first going to do the UVs, and then I'll duplicate the one with the UVs, the same with the armrest. We'll do that as well. For the backrest, this is going to be exactly the same process. We're just going to get this on its own. Make sure the scale is applied. Edge select, select all edges, do a bevel. Right around there is fine. And then we're just going to do the loop cuts again. And we're trying to maintain the same um, size of the polys that we're working with. All right, then we can go back to the face select mode. Select these faces. And we're going to do the same face, poke faces, face, rise to quads. And that should be perfect. Go back to vertex select. And I'm just going to bring back the other part so we can see what we worked with on this side. So we can work with the same pattern on the top side as well. Alright, so we got it selected now. And we're just going to do the shift control bevel around there again, I select, inset these faces, and we can go over to object mode and apply the subdivision surface with three segments, apply that, we can hit shade smooth. Now just before we go into sculpt mode, let's just get everything set in place here, so that should be right at the bottom, this I think we can We'll leave this as so for now. And there's going to be an extra step later on that we're going to be doing with the backrest as well. But for now we can go into the sculpt mode again. And we just use our new selection for the face sets. And we can just start inserting small amounts at a time. It's just a bit more controlled and it will also give us much better folds than if we just take it and drag it completely to the left as you see there which has no control so just small segments until you're happy with what you got and then we can start moving on the other side as well all 
right around there that should be fine and now what we're gonna do is we can go back over to object mode again and we select the backrest and we're gonna apply collision yeah under the physics properties just apply collision to the backrest for the seat we're gonna put this into the position it's supposed to be so just rotate that into place and I think the scale might be a bit too broad for this so we can just scale on the x-axis right around there and we can just move this into place that should be good let's go back into the object mode and now with this part um, that has collision we can go back into um, the sculpt mode and what we're gonna do is I think we can just mask these parts so just go to box mask and we're just gonna mask everything except for this part right about there and then just hit A again and smooth a couple of times there we go alright so now what we're gonna do is go back to the flow filter and we're just gonna inflate this part out just a bit as you can see the backrest is now creating a constraint so it can't move further than that so it's gonna try and fold over this and we don't need too much so we can head over to object mode again and as you can see there if we move this away just a bit there you can see it's created a little fold where it's going to press against the backrest alright so we also want the same effect as we had here with the inset of the seams we're going to do the same on the back side so we can just go back to edge and let's just put this on its own and we just select all the edges that we're going to be using there we go and then we can just do the same with the bevel and inset and alt s for scale and then just scale it proportionally inwards a bit go back to object mode select the subdivision surface with one segment apply that and then go over to sculpt mode again and we can just clear the mask and use the new face sets and then like before just hover over the highlighted part and just drag that in a bit just small segments at a time and then we can just drag the other part out to the right side until we're happy with the results there we go I think about there should be fine so now if we go back to object mode and bring everything else back we can see that everything looks nice and aligned and it looks the same so that's the idea we're going for everything should look the same just moving this in a bit um, alright uh, I think that's done so we can head over to the UVs so I'm starting with the back cushion and just get that on its own we're gonna go to edge select and then we're going to the inside of the mesh so this is a bit more difficult working from the inside but it's much better as you can see from the inside we've got a clear seam line so we're just gonna select all the edges on the seam once we get there there you can see all the seams line up so we're just going to select the middle parts
and we're just doing the same for all the other sides. So I'm just selecting these edges on the inside as well for the parts that we insert and I think that's just going to make it a bit easier when it comes to unwrapping just to have something that looks much better and I think this will help with the distortion so we have these parts separately so just select all the edges make sure you select every one of them And we can just mark the seam on this. Now the seam, yep. And then once we go to the outside and look at it from the front, we can see all those edges are selected. So now just back, select all, go to UVs, and then we just unwrap the whole UV set. This might take some time, so we'll come back once this is complete. And this is now complete, it's unwrapped, so as you can see there, the geometry is quite dense, but that's fine. Um, for viewing purposes and for display purposes, this will be perfect. So now we just go on to do the rest, and then I'll check back in once that's complete. Okay, so everything is unwrapped now. If we scroll in here, you can see where all the cuts were made. And this was done on all the meshes. And of course, these ones were just duplicated from the other side and the armrest as well. So we don't have to go through the same process for every single one of them. I also added a UDIA map. So we've got 4 by 2 as you can see there, and every single one of them is in their own texture space there. Okay, so one small detail that I missed just before we get over to Substance Painter is the legs. As you can see there, we have not added that yet, so I'm just going to add a cylinder. Just scale this in a bit. Let's bring this down. Let's see. I think we can unwrap this. So I'm just going to let's just select this part on its own so i think we can make a cut we can delete this face right here we're not going to see this face and then we'll make a cut right at the end just edge select there we go so we've got a cut going through there this bottom part i think let's delete that as well we won't be able to see this edge select again select this edge this is going to be a separate part on the top and this is going to be like the wood part and this is going to be the same material as the rest of the couch. It's like a little cover that I have on there. So let's select this one and then mark seam. There we go. Okay, so it's unwrapped now. So um, let's just duplicate this a couple of times. Just go back to object mode and I'm just going to use the mirror modifier where are we? Mirror. And we're just going to mirror across this object there. And Y as well. There we go. We can just apply. Go back to the UVs. And then let's just unwrap these. All right, perfect. I think we're going to need a new tile just for this part as well. So we just add a new segment there. Select everything and we're just going to move it into the new segment. But this is just going to make it much easier once it comes to texturing, which we're going to do now. So let's head over to Substance Painter. So once Substance Painter is open, we can just go to File, New, and create a new project in 4K. I'm just using OpenGL for this and select the file you just exported. And hit OK. Wait for it to load in. As you can see, we've got our UDIM tiles in and we've got our couch in here yeah, as well, the 3D model of it. So now we can just start um, preparing the textures. Firstly, I'm going to do a bake. So just open the bake menu 
um, don't need position and thickness so let's just see all right now that should be fine and bake the textures now that the textures is baked we can return to the painting mode and of course as i'm guessing we've gonna we're gonna have a bit of a shading issue here just with the ambient occlusion map so i'm just gonna go back to the material settings and just decrease the ambient occlusion just a bit somewhere around here not too much right around there should be fine just to take away the worst of that and then you can see there's still some ambient occlusion all around the map so let's look for a texture i'm gonna go to smart materials so let's just add this just give it a moment to load in So with the texture added already you can see he has a problem with the um, tiling as you can see these tiles are probably a bit smaller than the tiles from here so we're just going to add that as um, a separate material and apply that so firstly we can add a black mask and we're just going to duplicate this for each and every one of these tiles And then just go to the black mask on the first one. And we're just going to go to the polygon fill. And for this one I'm going to use the UV chunk fill. And then let's start with the couch part itself. Alright and then for the second part we're going to just select all the rest of these. There we go, we have everything selected now. So let's just go over to paint mode again. And then we're just going to start scaling this into the position that works the best. So let's start with this one. The lever color, the worn edges. Uh, let's see. I'm not going to use the worn edges, so we're going to just delete this layer. Remove that layer. And for the color, I think I'm going to change it to something a bit more reddish, like a red lever. Just around there, and then I'm just going to copy the value here, just so we can use it on the other sides as well. Now the pattern is a bit too large, so I'm just going to scale that in a bit, just style it a bit more. And then just make sure you're on the right layer. Right around there should be fine. Okay, so we're done with the first layer. We're going to go to the second one. And once you're happy with all these settings, you can just head on and do the same for each and every other part as well. Alright, as you can see we've got the material set up, we've got the wooden leg there and then the lever material for the rest of the couch. So just before I export I just like to um, look at it from a higher perspective. So let's see, yeah, there's, some, there's some tiling from the lever material, however that's not too bad. And there we can see the rest of the material. Alright, now perfect, so I'm just going to export this materials as is, export textures, and then just select your folder where you want to export it to, and then you can just hit export. Alright, so back in Blender, let's select the parts we need to do the shading on. So we select shading tab, and we can just open the UV editor just for a reference. Okay, like we can see here, this is the first UDIM tile. So this would be number one. So we can select this one, go to shading, add a new material, and then just hover over and select shift control T. And we know it's double zero one. And we can just import all the materials ending with the double zero one. 
So I just scroll through them, select all of them. And we could just import those textures. Just give it a while. And then once it is imported, we can just do the same for all the rest. <coughs> Just remember that you're going to have to go look at your UDMI tile setup just to make sure you select the correct um, the correct mesh for that. So let's just do that for everything and then once it's done we'll check in again. Alright so there you have it all the textures are set up so I'm just going to export this to a showroom and then I'm just going to do a render on this. This is on another project so I'll just export and import into the other project. And then, yeah, we'll see the final results. All right, so I added a couch to a scene now. Let's just go to render view. And there we go. Now we can just render this image. I already have my camera set up. And the render setting set up. So I'm just going to hit render. Render the image. And then we'll see how the end results look. Alright, so there we have it, the final render, and with that, this is the end of this um, video. So stay tuned, because in the next video, I'm going to do all the extras. I'll do maybe some pillows, and maybe a blanket to put over the side, and we'll do some extras, maybe some footstools, and then just show you how to do some different kind of patterns. Um, this is one style, there's a lot of ways to do it. It's the same basics, but yeah, I'll just show you how to do all the extra ones. So stay tuned for that, and I'll see you in the next one.